Hello everyone, new video on the divine name here. I got some comments recently by someone who both used to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter. So the question was really perplexing because I know this individual saw the information I recently presented. Before I get to that, as many of you know, I've written about and done videos about the divine name and how to pronounce it for about 30 years. I have presented evidence which I believe convincingly shows that the divine name was pronounced Yao. It's three letter and four letter forms, Yodewa and Yodewa He. I believe the final He or letter of the four letter form, the Tetragrammaton, is a vowel marker. It's something that was used to mark how to pronounce. The vowel sound of the preceding letter, or sometimes the vowel sound itself. So that's why, for example, in the Elephantine papyri, the Jewish colony that at times even wrote to Jerusalem, uses yod he wa, sometimes yod he he, because again, the final he was often used as a vowel marker. Whether or not that, that's the case in the, in the form yod he he, I believe in the Elephantine papyri it is. Because it's basically the same as yod he wa someone just wrote yod he he a couple times. Either way, there is no four-letter form in the Elephantine papyri, and if there was, it wouldn't be a huge surprise, because again, the four-letter form has a final he to mark the final vowel sound. I've presented evidence, not just the three-letter forms that I mentioned from Elephantine, but actual pronounceable forms of the divine name in biblical texts prior to the first century CE. So for example, in 4Q Leviticus B, a Dead Sea Scroll text, we have the divine name where it is in modern printed editions as the Tetragrammaton. It is Iota Alpha Omega in Greek, a pronounceable or phonetic form of the name that corresponds to yod He wa or even yod He He, I believe, in Elephantine papyri. Either way, we have Diodorus from the same time, a Greek historian in the first century BC, the same time as is often dated for Leviticus B, stating that Moses worshiped the god Yao, exactly the same form of the divine name used in 4Q Leviticus B, and exactly corresponding to the form used primarily at Elephantine and consistent with other evidence, including the theophoric suffixes or prefixes that are used as part of other names in the Bible. They're either yod he wa or yod he, ya o or ya. And sometimes the final vowel can be yahu or yahol, depending on the name it's attached to. But that's a variation that is consistent still with the pronunciation that is totally different from Yahweh or Yehovah, which uses the final He of the Tetragrammaton as an aspirant that's totally absent from the three-letter forms yod he wa and that's transliterated and represented in biblical texts like the Dead Sea Scrolls I mentioned, or by Diodorus, Greek historian of the first century BCE, as Yao. Even Jerome, writing in the fourth century, says that the divine name, the Tetragrammaton, is to be pronounced Yao. So I have evidence from the Elephantine papyri before the first century and after. Almost a thousand years that I cover in my writings and in my videos about how the pronunciation of the divine name during the biblical periods is most likely Yao, in addition to Ya. And I've allowed for the possibility of a final aspirant sound like Ah, in Yehovah or Jehovah in English, because of some poetic sections in the Bible, like Exodus 15, which might be consistent with that. And because sometimes in the Dead Sea Scrolls, a final hay is used to represent an aspirant sound when it's attached, for example, to pronouns like who, huwa. But that doesn't mean that's how it's being used in the Bible. And the evidence shows that the Jews during the biblical periods, like I mentioned, and others who knew how they pronounced the divine name because they heard it like Diodorus or Jerome 
when they represent the divine name, it is as yah Oh. So we have all of this evidence to use to show there was no final aspirant that anyone represented as having heard from the Jews, like Diodorus, or in phonetic transliterations, like in 4Q Leviticus B, or among Jewish colonies, like at Elephantine, in the 3rd, 4th, and 5th centuries BCE, writing at times to Jerusalem. I think they were probably using the correct form of the name, just like we have represented in the most recent and earliest Hebrew inscription to date that is dated to events explicitly described in the Bible, and it even appears to be an item with writing related to events in the Bible, dated to the 13th century BCE, that uses a form of the divine name that is impossible to get Yahweh or Yehovah from, but is entirely consistent with what I've been telling you this whole time. Yahweh. Let me bring it up for you. This is what I posted on my YouTube channel about a month ago, and that the person who came to me on my YouTube channel and who insulted me because he claimed that I should be listening to Dr. Nehemiah Gordon who relies on later Jewish, rabbinic, and Masoretic information and ignores the best available evidence from the first century um, CE earlier to the Papyri of Elephantine and even later in people like Jerome's writings. But to rely on later Jewish, rabbinic, Masoretic evidence and to ignore all of the earlier evidence from a long period of time from different peoples, Jews, Christians, and Greeks, is to accept the, is to accept inferior evidence. It's not the best evidence, and it's inconsistent with everything we have from the biblical period. Now, this recent find from the 13th century, this is my post. I, I cited the article. I also tweeted this, that the person who came to my channel uh, recently and uh, collapsed over the divine name and Dr. Nehemiah Gordon and his information from later Jewish sources as if it's somehow better than all of the information I just referenced and that I have discussed and more of which I discussed in my writings and videos, none of which Dr. Nehemiah Gordon or any proponent of Yahweh or the Watchtowers Jehovah have responded to or discredited. None of it. I don't need to discredit later rabbis and Masorites and Jews if what they're saying is in direct conflict with the theophoric elements in the Bible, with the earlier evidence from biblical texts from the Dead Sea Scrolls, with the representation of how the Jews pronounce the divine name, according to Moses, from Greek historians, or from colonies of Jews over several centuries who also rode to Jerusalem and used Yahol. And now we have this. Ancient tablet found on Mount Ebal predates known Hebrew inscriptions. May 14th. There it is. It has to be viewed under a special x-ray. It says a nearly an early Hebrew inscription from Mount Ebal near Nablus that was found on a folded lead tablet during an excavation in the 1980s recently underwent x-ray tomographic measurements to reveal hidden texts. Epigraphic analysis of the data revealed a formulaic curse written in a proto-alphabetic script likely dating to late Bronze Age that predates any previously known Hebrew inscription in Israel by at least 200 years. And here it is. The inscription was, You are cursed by the god yah o yod hey wa my question for those of you who support Yahweh or Yehovah as the way the divine name was pronounced during the biblical periods, how do you get Yahweh or Yehovah from yod -Heh You can't. It's not possible. You know what you get from yod -Heh Yah-Oh. Right. 
the, the, the form of the name and the pronunciation that's the best represented over a long period of time during the biblical periods and even after, all the way into the time of Jerome and after. If we look at marginal notes, for example, in Septuagint texts like Q. So, but I'm, I'm not relying on that, right? I'm looking at the first century and earlier, all the way back to the 13th century BCE or older in this case. You can't get Yahweh from yod -Wah. You can't get Yehovah, Jehovah, from yod -Wah. You can, and most often do, get yah -Oh. There it is again. The biblical tradition, Joshua 8.30, notes that Joshua, the leader of the Israelites, was appointed to take over from Moses built an altar on Mount Ebal as part of a ceremony to renew the covenant soon after they returned from Egypt to Canaan. Thus, said the research team, it is possible that Zertel's findings relate to this verse. In Deuteronomy 11, 26, 29, Moses tells the nation that when they finally enter the land of Israel, they should recite blessings at the flowering Mount Gerizim and curses at the opposite mountain, the barren Mount Ebal. So this artifact with this curse and where it was found and the, and the time that it's dated to is exactly during these events. This tablet is, I mean, I don't see how anyone could say it's not a part of Moses's directive to curse Mount Ebal. And the God's name that's used to do so in direct association with Moses after the events of Exodus 3 is yah -Oh, not Yahweh and not Yehovah. Unless someone, Dr. Nehemiah Gordon, any proponent, proponent of Yahweh or Jehovah, English form of Dr. Nehemiah Gordon's preferred form, how do you get those from this? You can't. So, it's clear, isn't it? You're wrong. There's no evidence that shows your view of how to pronounce the divine name is correct during the biblical periods. The evidence shows... It was yah -Oh. And this evidence goes all the way back to the 13th century or earlier to documented events in the Bible, to actual items from those events under those people who came with Moses and Joshua and did what they were told to do is showing you they didn't pronounce it Yahweh. They didn't pronounce it Yehovah. They pronounced it yah -Oh. Just like the Jews at Elephantine. Just like the Jews in the Dead Sea Scrolls who used yah -Oh in 4Q Leviticus B. Just like Diodorus of the 1st century BCE Greek historian told us. Just like Jerome and others have told us. We don't need people telling us things that are not true and defying all of this evidence that goes all the way back to actual events and people in the Bible. Using the name of the God of the Bible. Stop pretending your evidence is anywhere near the evidence I have presented, which you have all ignored. And yet you continue to misrepresent how to pronounce God's name. That's despicable. If you're not going to respond, if you're not going to explain how you get Yahweh or Yehovah, from yod -Heh wah that goes all the way back to events described in the Bible according to recent findings, stop using it. Stop embarrassing yourselves. Show some humility. Admit you were wrong and admit that we were right. And that's not really a big deal. You should have known this the whole time if you were actually looking at the best available evidence that I've been showing you and that's been there even before I showed you, you would have known the whole time that God's name is not pronounced Yahweh and it's not pronounced Yehovah either. 
And based on this information and this finding here that goes all the way back to documented events in the Bible, it says Galal said he believes all 48 letters are clear on the scans and that the inscription dates to the end of the 13th century BCE, but other authors believe it could be older. Because of this, I'm no longer going to use a hyphenated ending for the divine name. I've done that to try to help a lot of you who are just stuck on Jehovah. You're not interested in the best available information. You just want to stay comfortable. You go ahead and do that. You go ahead and run to Dr. Nehemiah Gordon and his later Jews and rabbis and Masorites who contradict all of the best available information from the first century CE earlier all the way back to the 13th century BCE. And between that, we have Dead Sea Scrolls, Diodorus, and the Elephantine Papyri. It's incredible to me how much you people continue to ignore and embarrass yourselves. Like the person who came to my channel this morning and just showed complete lack of awareness. Not only for everything I presented, but for what I just recently presented on my forum and in my Twitter feed. And that is this article here which gives us this information here that's datable to the time of Moses and the Jews who were told to curse Mount Ebal and they did so in the name of their God, Yah-Ol, not Yahweh or Yehovah, Jehovah. And if you don't want to accept that, that's fine. Do whatever you want. Stop coming to me and telling me I'm wrong when you not only rarely even understand the issues, you're not only using inferior evidence, usually from much later periods, but it contradicts the best. It contradicts the best evidence I've been presenting to you for almost 30 years now, and it's been there for even longer. And now, we have even another piece of evidence, the earliest so far, showing that for, if we go from the time of Jerome to the time of this inscription and curse of Mount Ebal, almost 2,000 years of documented evidence showing the name of the God of the Bible was not only pronounced Yah, but most often in its three-letter and four-letter form, with the fourth letter of the four-letter form being a vowel marker, most often pronounced Yah-Oh. 